Number five, number five. Fifth trout, Jack. Mission accomplished. What's up guys, Bump here. In this video, I'm gonna be trout fishing with worms. Using worms for trout can be a great trout fishing technique, especially if you're fishing with kids or you just wanna maximize your time on the water. Let's go over our trout rig here. I think this is the best trout rig for using worms. It's just a dropper rig or high-low rig with two dropper loops and a sinker on the bottom. But the secret sauce here is these small circle hooks. I'm using Gamakatsu size 8 circle hooks. I'll put a link to them below in the video description. These really small circle hooks can be hard to find, so I usually just pick them up online. You can get the 25 hook value pack for the price that most stores charge for a 10 pack. I prefer to use a heavier sinker. Uh, today I'm using a three quarter ounce Dipsy Swivel. The heavier sinker really helps keep a tight line, especially if you have any wind. We want a tight line so the circle hooks will set the hook for you. There is one trick to tying this rig with the small circle hooks. I'll show you that later in the video. So it is the middle of winter time right now. It's about 30 degree air temperature this morning. So if you were out digging for worms, you'd have a heck of a time doing that in the morning, but luckily I've got a little Burmy compost worm bin at home that I normally keep outside, but I actually move indoors in the winter time. So I raise my own worms just for trips like this where I don't have time to go catch bait and these worms a lot with the little guys fishing with Jack here today say hi Jack <clears throat> worms are obviously a good way to introduce kiddos to catching fish and don't waste any time searching for bait when you've got them there just grab a handful and go I don't have much time Jack's got a soccer game in a few minutes we're gonna try to catch some trout for a soccer game you ready for it Get your shin guards. All right, he's ready to rock, but we gotta catch some of these trout here. The geese are having a party over there. They didn't invite us. I don't know, they're fighting or something. I don't know what the hell. Let go, oh, getting one, getting one, Jack. Get him, Jack, get him. Oh, we got that one, Jack. There's our. Our first trout, as the, the geese are having a, a brawl over there, fight club over there with the geese. You got him, Jack? All right, come over here, away from the edge. All right, what did he hit on, top or bottom? Let's see. Oh, he hit on bottom. Hey, that's a big boy. Nice one, Jack. Good job, bud. Right there in the corner of the mouth, just like a circle hook should. Pretty rainbow there. There you go. First trout of the day. Going on the stringer. Caught that during the goose fight club over there. Not sure how much I got that on video. My GoPro wasn't going, but I was trying to film it on my phone and the pole went off. Toes are freezing. It's a little cold out here, isn't it? Number two, number two, Jack. He's on. He's on? Yeah. I was getting ready to go throw my spinning lure here. Oh, little guy, Jack. Are you a keeper? <laughs> well, they're all keepers here, bud. Oh. Just because you can't, no culling of trout here, bud. So what you keep is what you get, or what you catch is what you get. Mm -hmm. So that last one was a stud muffin. Yeah. This guy's. A muffin. <laughs> a little dude here. But it is what it is. Boy, I can't even get this one baited up. And Jack's already got number three on the line. All right, get him up out of the... There you go. Good job, Jack. Get him off here for you. Let's see. That one hit on the top, Jack. He hit on top. Ooh, he got a little mud on him, huh? Yep. Our ice is, ice here is melting. Creating a soupy, muddy mess here. All right, Jack, go ahead and put that back in the rod holder for me. All right, Jack, we don't have any lines in the water right now. We gotta get back to fishing. All right, don't fall down here. All 
All right, we're back to fishing. You got him? Whoa, that was quick, Jack. Already got number four. We've been here about, what, 15 minutes? Get him, here, get him up. Here we go. Ooh, Jack, we got a mess. One more fish. <laughs> One more fish and we'll have our fifth, huh? Yeah. All right. I don't think that'll be too bad. See if we can get that out. Jake's got to switch to the wool socks. Soccer socks just aren't cutting it. Is he on? Yeah. Number five, number five. Fifth trout, Jake. Lift it up, lift it up. Good job, dude. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished, Jack. We got, what, five trout in about 30 minutes. Plenty of time before your soccer game. Not a bad morning, not a bad morning. Jack, look how many we got. Not a bad morning. Oh, there's those geese. Oh, hold on. You gonna chase them? Hold on. You gonna chase the geese? All right. <laughs> Good job, Jack. Now I'm going to show you how to tie this dropper rig. If you made it this far, please give this video a thumbs up down below. And if you want to see more videos like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well. We're going to start with six to eight foot of our leading material. You can use fluoro or mono. In this video, I was using six pound mono. The great thing about this rig is that you can cover multiple depths with multiple baits. I try to make my first dropper about 18 inches from the sinker end, and the second one about 18 inches above it. With the small circle hooks, if you make a dropper loop and then try to add the hook, it's nearly impossible. The doubled over line and small eyelets just don't jive. You'll want to make your dropper loop with a hook on the line you do this by threading the hook onto the line, then double it over your line like this. Then you're going to wrap the doubled over line around your finger two times and then run the hook back through the two loops created by your fingers. Then you'll tighten down the dropper loop. After doing this, you can see that the hook will move freely up and down the dropper loop. I like to prevent this movement by tying a single overhand knot with the hook. After tying this knot, you can gently work the knot down the loop towards the end like this before tightening. You repeat all this for the second dropper loop. I then like to tie another loop knot on the end of our leader for the sinker. Using a loop knot here will allow you to switch out or remove the sinker. After completing your rig, you're going to attach it to your main line. I used a uni to uni knot to attach uh, the rig to my main line, which is braid, or you could just use a swivel to attach the main line, whatever you prefer.